is, well, you could say grace in victory, but you can also say grace and resilience in defeat. And the reason for that is that as we progress through life, as you pointed out, on all fronts, things are not always going to turn out the way we want them to turn out. And we're going to all suffer harsh defeats of one form or another, sometimes justly and sometimes unjustly. And because of that, one of the things that we need to learn and to learn early is how to take defeat in stride. Now, you made a case that not only did you learn to take it in stride, but that you also learned how to extract extract value, let's say, from your failures so that you could then proceed to a new level of striving and attainment. You know, when, when we see someone who's a good sport, and generally that's someone who we might spontaneously admire, we see someone who doesn't take too much, who doesn't try to become vainglorious, let's say, as a consequence of winning, but even more importantly, that can take a defeat in good humor, can learn from it, and can move forward nonetheless. And the reason we admire that is because we all need to learn how to do that. And you do learn that in the context of competition. If the competition is structured fairly and as a consequence of, of like task-specific merit, let's say, which is clearly the case in, in an athletic realm. Absolutely. So, right. So it's, you, you think now, you think that, you said that um, you you made a lot of sacrifices on the time and energy front, let's say, to engage in this competitive enterprise, but that the rewards, despite the effort, the rewards were much greater than the cost of the sacrifice. So, And you've alluded to some of the rewards. You said that you've been able to discipline yourself and push yourself, and you've also got resilient in the face of defeat, which is crucially important. How do you think that's generalized to the rest of your life? And do you think that's typically the case for people who engage in athletic competition? Like, what do you think that does for people in general? I think the higher you compete in terms of um, what level you're competing at athletically, um, whether that be high school, then college, and then whatever sport that you may be doing, Olympic level, I think the higher you compete, the more benefits you reap, typically. Um, you learn more about determination, grit, resiliency. Um, of course, you are able to, the athletic ch- achievements continue as well. But the lifelong skills and characteristics you develop outside of just the athletic achievements, um, these are skills that will translate far beyond that into your whole life, forever. And that's something, again, that I'm I'm witnessing and myself, I think if I didn't play sports, if I didn't have um, that sense of teamwork, that sense of, I was team captain at University of Kentucky for two years. So if I didn't have that sense of leadership, accountability, really, I think accountability is, and responsibility is a good word, um, then I don't think I would feel confident enough to take a public stance in the way that I have this past year, which it sounds silly because my stance is so simple and it's rooted in, in of course, truth and common sense and science and logic, reasoning, all the things. Um, So it sounds silly to say I might not have the confidence and leadership and the security in and of myself to take the arrows that I'm taking if it weren't for sports. I I really do accredit that to being an athlete. Um, There was an Ernst & Young study that said, near I think 94% of C-level executives, so CEO, CFO, COO, that are females, we're once female athletes. And I think that shows how um, the skills that you develop translate far beyond your sport. Yeah, well, it might, it might seem silly in one sense for you to make any claims to the necessity for training for just saying the things you're saying. But there aren't that many people saying the things you're saying in as public a manner as you're saying them. And so obviously there's difficulties there that... Um, are beyond the typical person's athlete or not, the typical person's ability to withstand. So even if the uh, topic is in some ways surreal, um, it's definitely the case that it's unlikely that people are going to make take a public stance. Now, and so you said you learn to have a certain degree of confidence in yourself, but also to be able to tolerate a certain amount of stress as a consequence of this highly competitive training. But I would also ask you, you were the team captain, you said, for a number of years. 
And so what do you think the attributes, what are the necessary attributes of a team captain? Now, obviously, you have to be very skilled athletically and, and competitive, and that means that you're striving to for victory. You're striving to be the best on your team. You're striving to break the appropriate records. But you have to modify that, obviously, if you're team captain. And so, like, how do you think, how did you reconcile the demands to be the best on the team with the necessity of being a team leader? And what did you have to learn in order to be an effective captain? I think the thing that I knew I wanted to implement as a captain, um, my team at University of Kentucky, there's 40 girls. Obviously, when you're dealing with 40 girls, there's a lot of different personalities. There's a lot of different ways people communicate, how they handle situations, um, how they deal with pressure, how they like to be motivated. And so as a captain, number one, I wanted to be someone that everyone felt like they could talk to. Um, again, when you're dealing with 40 girls, of course, there's cliques. Um, there's people on the team who are best friends. There are other people who don't necessarily like each other. You work together, but you won't be friends outside of your sport. And so I wanted to be someone who could who could unite everyone in a sense. Um, I'm not, I don't want to make anyone be friends with someone they don't want to be friends with, but how can we come together to achieve our goals um, and what that looks like in terms of communication, which again, I, I'm seeing that translate now into my life and how I deal with what I'm dealing with. But I think communication is huge. Two, I think what strived me um, to help us all achieve our goals, our, our goals we set as a team, was to constantly remind the team of the goals we set. I think it's very often in sports where you talk about big things and then you kind of forget about it. And when it comes championship season or whatever that looks like, um, you're not geared up to achieve what you've set because you haven't worked towards it, really. You talk about it, but talking about it isn't enough. So in practice, I would constantly remind people, hey, you know, this is the goal you set for yourself personally, which can help us achieve our goals as a team. Don't forget that. And I always saw them 